Hey guys, we are back with round two. Yep, welcome back to the round. Uh, we're going to have uh, Jason Kaczynski himself versus Jay Witz, Josh Wittenkeller. Both of these players lost in the water pod? Uh, they were in the fire pod. Fire pod. Yes. Uh, so those two players lost. Uh, other players losing are, of course, Sammy Sakum, who will be taking on Igor Costa, who also lost, mm -hmm. which means... Ryan Sablehouse won, uh, Yamato won, Jay Hornung won, and Edmund Curris Edmund won. Edmund Curris won, right. Yes. So uh, we should have a pretty good match. Um, yep. So as we know, Jason chose his deck at the table last round. Yep. Uh, he, he opted not to play Darkrai. His tournament winning, uh, maybe legend winning uh, deck and um, he we're gonna, we're gonna leave you guys with a little bit of surprise for his deck. He opted with something special. Yes, certainly special indeed. So um, here we go. We're going into the game, and let's see what we got. So Jason has two starters. Yep. And we uh, we saw from last round. Uh, I saw from last round, anyways, that Jay Woods is gonna go with Dark Rye here. Yep. Uh, certainly didn't have the best hand against Jay Hornung. It was kind of a roll, but. And is all over the place. He knows how. I know how much he wants this. He's a little. He might be a little nervous. You know. Yeah. Uh, he's pl literally playing a legend of the game. Yes. And, um, Living legend. Maybe. I think most would argue he is the most uh, accomplished player ever to touch this game. Oh no! No question. Yeah. So, here we go. And he's a little bit. Uh, <laughs> he likes to bite people, apparently. <laughs> But uh, here we go. Here we go. Well, let's see if he can take a bite out of the competition against Jay Witz. The loser of this match will be eliminated from the top yes. 10 Invitational. So the stakes are as high as they can be. Yeah, this is definitely a very uh, tough match. You know, both these players are going to give it their all. The, you know, Jason, a previous winner of the Top Cut Invitational. And... Uh, Jason, actually, uh, a little secret about his world's deck. It did not play any Absol. Yep, and he really showed me. And yeah. Kyle, and you. And everyone. Yeah, everyone. Yeah. Absol is not necessary to win. Yeah, you know, I was always a fan of at least one. But uh, apparently Jason was like, no, uh, I can get away without it. Yeah, doesn't need it, you know. Yeah, so uh, he tried to cover up the Absol in the art. Even though it is it is a very pretty Absol. It's very good. Good play, Matt. It's yeah. really cool looking. So here we go. What is Jason, Jason playing? Jason flips over a Piplup. Ooh. We're going to see him fully on, folks. Oh, yeah. I did see a Mew, so I kind of had my suspicions. But uh, yeah, here we are. And that float stone on the Keldeo right away. Jason's in a good position here. Yeah. you know, Keldeo's a very versatile card, especially with float stone. Uh, before uh, the latest set, Plasma Freeze, you only still uh, Keldeo in Blastoise, really. And Dark Rye. And Dark Rye. But now... Just two decks because they're only good ones that could really attack with Keldeo. Yep. Or uh, abuse that Dark Rye, Dark Cloak ability. Yep. So with Floatstone, uh, there's a whole branch of decks that really became a little bit more viable, such as Empoleon, as we're seeing. Especially with the influx of... Uh, of, of... Plasma Blast? Excelgore. Uh, you know, yeah. That, that became huge. Uh, Keldeo became more and more important. Yeah. Uh, Keldeo is a very... Uh, pretty much a staple in almost every deck right now. Yeah. So Interestingly enough, Jason goes here for the Mr. Mime on turn one with the level ball. He has a Piplup already. He has a Keldeo. Mr. Mime, that's going to be very useful against Dark Rye. Oh, yeah. Mr. Mime is basically a Dark Rye. Uh, he just stops him so hard. Uh, but as a counterpoint to Dark Rye, uh, or as a counterpoint, Absol is very good versus Mr. Mime. Yeah. Uh, it is a f almost a free plus 20 damage. Definitely. Uh, sure, you don't get your 30 damage from Night Spears, but Absol does a lot of damage yep. when Mr. If, Mime's on the if, field. Uh, Josh plays Absol in his Dark Rye version. We're certainly going to see that come out as it's going to be very powerful versus Jason, who's going to want to flood his field with Pokemon. Uh, Jason did not have a supporter in the first turn. He, he was forced to just pass with Mr. Mime in the active position. Yeah, really unfortunate. Uh, w but if Empo he can get some Empoleons out, he can really start drawing cards. Yeah. Empoleon got another power increase with Execute. Definitely. Uh, you know, it's, yeah. it requires 
no discards anymore to draw two cards. Yeah, yeah. Execute basically negates the cost of Empoleon's ability. Exactly. So it, it is a great card to have. Okay, we're going to see that Verbank City come down for Josh. Uh, looks like he's going to look to do some, some damage here with his lasers on that on that Mr. Mime. You know, to take out that Mr. Mime early, Javis can really have his way with Jason's deck, whether or not he has a supporter. Yeah, definitely. Uh, computer search, Sableye, so very, very strong. He, he might be able to the, get maybe a Dark Rye out. He even, he's even discarding two Darks here, so. Yeah, he's in great fingers, shape. Turn one Night Sphere, huh? Uh, maybe, it? maybe. He would need an Energy Switch and two Dark Patches yeah, with a Dark to attach uh, to uh, Sableye. Let's see what he goes for here. I think he went for a Dark Rye. Perhaps. Um, he does have a Juniper in his hand. I did see that. Awesome. So he is in great shape. You know, after coming off a loss in the last round, this is a uh, re really would be an accomplishment, right. taking out a three-time world champion. Yeah. Uh, Josh here, he has two darks in the discard. You got to think he, he has one in his hand. So there's two scenarios here. He's going he's gonna to junk hunt and get a computer search back in his hand, or he's going to get a turn one Night Sphere. Yep, most definitely. So these are basically our options here. Does he get double dark patch uh, energy switch? Probably not, but we've seen weirder things. <laughs> oh, certainly, that's for sure. Uh, and, uh, we're not going to see the double dark patch energy yep. switch. Swing and a miss. We're all going to see uh, a pretty great turn one for, for Josh here. Junk hunting for a computer search. That's an ace spec. You can only play one in your deck, but as we know with Sableye, you can play that card multiple times. Oh, yeah. A specs, the reason why they are A specs is because of how powerful they are. Exactly. Uh, computer search is the best search card in the game. Along with, and, you know, the other A specs, they're pretty much almost the best of what they do. Exactly. So, what, you know, you combine the best search in the game with one of the best utility attacks in the game, uh, it creates a very powerful combo mm -hmm. that uh, we saw here uh, this weekend. Yep, and we're going to see a junk hunt. He's going to get the computer search and the energy search. And Jason is left here with uh, almost nothing. I think we see an ace spec here, but I think it's a, a dowsing machine. That's not going to help. No, it, it will not help. Uh, not in this situation. He has a, uh, a Mew EX in his hand. I think a Dust Snore, a Catcher. Uh, he, he's kind of in very rough shape here. And we, this might be a quick exit for... Uh, Jason here. You know, he went 0-2 in the last Top Gun Invitational, and man, it'd be a shame to see him go 0-2 here again, especially after winning Worlds. Uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, but then again, you know, these eight players are really the, the cream of the crop. Uh, so it would not be surprising to see an 0-2. Like, sure, Jason is very, very good, but uh, Josh is showing that he's no pushover himself. Certainly. So, here we go. And it's uh, back to yeah. Josh's turn. Yeah, Jason just, just had to pass. Uh, we're going to see at least one dark patch here. Uh, maybe Josh will have two. Maybe. Uh, uh, the Night Sphere here, it's, it's looking real bad for Jason. If he has a dark patch energy switch, dark patch, dark patch, uh, there's some... There's an, uh, a few combinations where uh, he can get a turn two Night Spear here. Right. And that will be devastating Dark for... Dark Patch, Jason Attachment? Yeah, yeah, yeah. very good. Um, uh, you, they used to have a card for that. It's called. It was called Rocket Energy. Oh, yeah? Yeah, and... Uh, now basic, it's called Ether. Yeah. Well, it was a little better than Ether. Um, I can imagine. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe Jason should st just start playing Ether so he can just do it legally. Well, uh... Josh, he got a dark patch with his computer search and accidentally showed Jason, and now he's just leaving it face up because cat's out the bag. We <laughs> figured what he was getting here. Yeah, I, I think every uh, all of us were just like, yep, here it comes. And Jason's just like, uh, Yep, here it, it comes. My deck is so good. <laughs> you know, I don't see a... A, uh, a supporter? A supporter in Josh's hand? He does. He has a Juniper. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. That's uh, going to be his third one gone already. He might. You, you know, might, you gotta he's going to get rid of it, though. Yeah. You know, you got to think if Jason, uh, Josh, uh, doesn't get too far ahead and burns a bunch of resources in the process, Jason has a good chance to come back here. But uh, all Josh is looking for here is a dark patch or an energy switch. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's drawing seven here. 
wisely dis, uh, benches the Caldeo in case he might need it. Oh, but, yeah. you know, this also plays into Jason's plans if Jason can get set up with the Empoleon. It looks like Josh did indeed get an energy switch. Yep, that's what we're going to see. We're going to see a turn to Night Spear. These are the, uh, this is what dreams are made of. Yeah, turn two Night Spear, no supporter for your opponent. Uh, I don't know if I can ask for much better, except Black Ballista. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, that's the all. I mean, if the top, dr if the second best dream is turn two Night Spear, I guess the best one would be turn two Black Ballista. Uh, certainly. And that's, coincidentally, really the only th thing yep. that could beat this deck. Yep. So, uh, Jason is already down a prize. Uh, Piplup is gone, and Josh made... Sure, he didn't get rid of the Mr. Mime, so he's not going to do bench damage in the next turn either. But I think he chose the right target. Yeah, really getting rid of the uh, the Piplups are really the root of the problem. Sure, Mr. Mime can kind of hold you back a little bit, but uh, Piplup is where you need to focus your attention on. Yeah, especially with Jason having no supporter, no cards to play. Gets rid of the Piplup, the out for Rare Candy uh, Empoleon, draw two cards. That's not there anymore. And Jason had to pass again. Yeah, we're, we're really just seeing a... Uh, a steamroll here. Um, this is looking like an early exit for Jason Kozinski. Again, he, maybe he's just unlucky when he comes here. Well, he won the first year. Yes, and uh, it was a, it was actually with a very interesting deck uh, he won yeah. in the first year. He won with uh, Vileplume Apom. Mm -hmm. It was very cool. Uh, you know, we made a pretty big mistake the first year. We didn't have any time limit, and Jason certainly used that to his advantage. Oh, yeah. We were there for quite a while watching him tail code his way to victory. <laughs> Eventually, people just got frustrated and gave up. <laughs> uh, for seri uh, uh, seriously, seriously though, but... To put damage counters on all of his Pokemon before he moves them to be knocked out. There is that uh, Empoleon you were talking about. Yep. Uh, I don't uh, think he has a rare candy, though. No. So, uh, oh, and then another pass by Jason. So this is going to be Jason's last chance to draw a card that will save him. Yep. And Josh even then, the he might be to too far behind by now. Use Hypnotoxic Laser to just really cement that victory. Yeah, this is, on. this is very important for Josh. He's been uh, he's been prepping for the tournament. You know, people say he uh, he was a little a bit of a pushover compared to the rest of the competition, but um, he's going to be going one and one if Jason doesn't draw something right now. So when we're going to see Night Spear come in pretty close. After Josh kind of clears out his hand a little bit with the Ultra Ball. What would you get even get here? Maybe you just get nothing. Or maybe just a save light to thin out your deck. Yeah, you know, if I was Josh, I probably would have just attached and attacked. You know, why Why burn a bunch of resources when you don't need to? Well, you know, I... If Jason were to mount a comeback, you, you want to have those resources available, you know. As long as he's not burning catchers, though, I think he's, he's fine. Yeah, he should be okay. You know, he doesn't really need anything else that, that's not on his field already. Right. So, here we go. Our, we're just going to see a Night Spear. He bench, he's thinking about benching the extra Dark Rye. Um, he's really just trying to secure his victory here. Yeah. He doesn't want to give Jason really... As, he's wanting to give him as least outs as possible. Right. You know, we see one Dark Rye powered up, another Dark Rye almost powered up. Josh figures, might as well get that third one powered up yeah. soon. Might as well Juniper here. <laughs> yep, get further ahead. Josh yeah. is going to do 140 damage to this Keldeo in this turn after Poison, leaving it with just 30 HP and uh, a turn away from being knocked out. Yeah. Josh yeah. won't even have to attack again. Jason doesn't draw something. Exactly, and even if he does draw something, Jason would need a max potion to get out of this one right. too. And even if Jason does draw th something... Jason may not be able to wake up. That's another uh, big factor. He has to uh, draw something that won't be knocked out by Josh instantly. The real key card he's going to want to draw here is Juniper. Right. That or Colrus. Uh, it, it's very, uh, you know, maybe a N here because his hand is like has a lot of catchers in it. So he might need those later. But here we go. Does he draw a supporter? Well, he wakes up. That's a, that's a And start. the answer is another Empoleon. Another Empoleon. And uh, Jason's really mulling his options here. Well, you know, there's a few things he can do. He can catch her multiple times and then yep. pass. He should play those Empoleons down. Yes. Maybe nobody will notice. Um, maybe he thinks Cordelia is legal and he can get it out. Who knows? 
Oh, he does have a Mew. That oh, is. Oh yeah. We did forget about that. Yeah. It, it has been lurking in his hand for quite a while. But so, all Josh needs here is an energy card and a hypnotoxic laser. Yeah. And this is this victory will be all his. He does have a good amount of cards in his hand. He might just have it anyways. Uh, depends. If he has like maybe a dark patch and energy switch. If he just has energy right. switch in general, really, and a laser. Uh, he has ends, catchers. He might just want a random receiver here and just go for the Juniper. Yeah, I think that's what you would do. Yep. You know, uh, I didn't expect uh, Josh to win this game by taking six prizes. I thought he would certainly bench Jason out, but he's got a chance here to take all six. Oh, most definitely. Uh, here we go. Will, I think Josh should random receiver here. You never know. Um, Jason might just shuffle his hand into his deck. <laughs> Certainly wouldn't be the first time this weekend. Yeah, most definitely. Uh, he opts to end here. He, he really just wants to uh, maybe give Jason a chance. Um, and really, uh, all he needs is a laser and energy, and he, he'll get it. Yeah, I don't think uh, an early round exit was what either of these players were thinking of when they started the Top Gun Invitational today. <laughs> most definitely. Uh but most people were saying, you know, Josh is probably going to go 0-2. Uh, but here he is showing that, hey, that's not exactly the case. Certainly is not the case. Uh, uh, although we haven't seen much from this game, Josh seems to have just been given the favorable uh, odds here. And All right. So like Josh is only electing to draw three cards with his No, he, oh, he dropped a dropped card. One. There we go. There's a catcher. He does not draw the energy. He's on energy or an energy switch. Jason will survive another turn and have a fresh hand of six. Is this the comeback we're waiting for here? Maybe. Uh, I would have liked to see random receiver personally and maybe just get that fourth juniper out of the deck. Yeah, maybe. Maybe, he, or maybe for all I know, uh, that juniper wasn't even in the deck. It's prized, and uh, uh, he may only run eight supporters. You got to think, though. You don't want to go all in. You get that fourth juniper, and then you use it, and by some miracle, let's say you uh, don't get the energy. Or even in another case, you use the random receiver. You get another N, so you have two Ns. And then now you just have a random receiver less in your deck. And right. uh, Jason's Ns would be more powerful in that situation. Maybe we'll see a uh, a Shelmet drop on the field, and it's really employee on Excel Gore. You know, I think, really, uh, Josh went a little too crazy on his previous turn. You know, he didn't save an energy in case something got catchered. And yeah. I think... That would have been pretty huge. That would have been. Um, however, this Mu EX has no way to leave the field, so this out of laser energy is still very real. Yeah, definitely. So Jason just kind of mulling his options over. He has a float zone, energy, he's skylining here. Uh, what would you even get? A pip up maybe? Mm, maybe. Uh, it's hard to know. Uh I wonder why did Jason promote Mew last turn? Um, maybe he just figured, well, you know, I'm gonna lose probably. He, he might just <laughs> want to get it over with. It's <laughs> kind of like you, once if you fall too far into despair, sometimes you just kind of make these Turn little your brain off. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, he he kind of realized what We're he was. We're gonna see like, the correct move this turn, maybe. And he was like, oh, turn. oops. <laughs> but. Uh, I guess, yeah, you just attach a water to Mew and just kind of pass. Maybe recycle. Eh, no, you don't even recycle. You have a... He plays recycle. <laughs> oh, does he? Yeah. Wow. I was just like, maybe you recycle, and then uh, there it was. Yeah. Uh, I should talk to Kyle after this game. I think uh, one of his bad deck from Monday decks is missing. Wow. You know, from digital to card, you know, Jason... Uh, Probably is a big follower of the Bad Deck Mondays. And here it, it is. Uh, Tool Scrapper coming down big. Yep. And he even has a catcher for this. He has a catcher. He has an N. A random receiver. Uh, so he... I think you go for catcher here. It's pretty good. Yeah, nope. yeah. And uh, then uh, Yeah, you would go for catcher. Worst case scenario, uh, you just do 90... Right. But he opts to just end without the catcher. Um, interesting choice. Very interesting. Uh, I would have liked to see... M maybe he's just going for a... Saving the catchers for the pip-ups. 
the, yeah, the very possibly. real uh, concern know, for, for don't Josh. Don't give Jason any chance of getting back into the game because uh, Mew is certainly not doing anything on its own. Right, you know, it plays water energy. Uh, Mew is not going to be able to do much of anything until Empoleon hits the field. Yeah, you know. either either Mew is doing nothing or if some miracle Mew is able to get three energies on it. It, it can use Secret Sword, but that's 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 pretty much it. And uh, Josh certainly wishes now he had used the catcher, I guess. Yeah, it would have done a lot of damage. Right. Instead, he's basically just doing 30. Uh, I don't think he drew another catcher, though. He did not. Uh, however, he will be taking two prizes this turn right. and getting a crucial 30 damage onto the Mew EX. Right. Any Night Sphere will now take out that Mew EX. That is correct. Uh, and it, let's see what two cards he gets off his prizes. It is, ah, the Juniper was prized. Mm, yep. So, so there it is. It ends and we got a Piplip here, but uh, it's almost not going to matter. All Josh needs is a catcher at this point. Maybe uh, Jason plays Life Do. Who knows? Maybe he does play Life Do. Huh? Yeah. I mean, what else are you going to play in Napoleon? Uh, it's actually a oh, Did we yeah. see Scramble Switch or... Can we see a computer search? Or Dowsy, Dowsy Machine. Dowsy. Yeah, Dowsy Machine. Yeah. Uh, so oh, we're going to well. see a Piplup and probably another Piplup. And, uh, yeah, uh, I don't know if this Mew is going to be able to survive the turn. Uh, maybe, but I just doubt it. Then again, uh, with the Juniper in Josh's hand again, you know, end the two, right? Oh, here it but is, end the two. Josh could just draw a Juniper here. That is live again. Slowly, slowly, slowly. Jason could work his way back in this game, but he uh, needs to get that Mew out of the active spot, which is certainly going to be a hassle. Yeah, he has to really just has to pay the retreat cost, which is yeah. And what do you what do you promote at this point? You know, you got to promote a Piplup to just sacrifice it. Yeah, this is a almost yeah. unwinnable situation. No matter how you cut this, uh, we were wrong about the. Uh, about the dowsing machine, we we do see a rock guard from Jason Kaczynski. Rock guard. Yeah. Very cool. Uh, definitely uh, from the Bad Deck Monday <laughs> series. <laughs> and there comes the rock guard <laughs> onto the Piplup. You want to take that prize, Jay Wits? Take 60 damage. Not to mention the extra from Piplup's attack. <laughs> 10. Fury 20, attack. 20. Or 10. 20 damage. 20 damage. From, it's going to put Darkrai at 80 damage. Oh, yeah. If it attacks next turn. Oh, yeah. That Piplup is fierce. So, does Josh have a catcher to finish off the game? Does he even have a supporter to do anything with? Uh, these are very real questions. Um, let's see what he can do with the three cards in his hand. Uh, he does have a random receiver. I think a laser. And I, don't, I, I didn't catch what the last card was. A tool scrapper, I believe. Looks like he's going for the... Uh the Juniper that was placed back in his deck, right? Yes. Oh, there's an end. There's an end. That's okay, though. You know, uh, get, you don't really, you just want to get those cards out of your deck. Uh, maybe dump your hand, go for two more cards. Who knows? Maybe you'll hit the catcher. Right. So, or even hitting energy would be good. He can junk hunt. Mm -hmm. That'd be fine. Okay, so Josh is going to consider his options here. He can, uh, uh, at this point, do you think he plays the end for two? You know, that's not going to do much for him. He already has a knockout, you know, it's, and he's going to be one attack away, really, from winning the game after this turn. Uh, it's an energy switch. Um, at this point, you might want to just go energy switch off of Dark Ride to a Sableye, and then laser, and then end, see what happens. Yeah, avoid that. Uh, and best case scenario, as much as yeah, you can. best case scenario. You draw a catcher and you just win. Right. Worst case scenario, you just junk hunt. So exactly. I, I, I like that option from Josh. And it looks like he's looking at the energy search or the energy switch, and uh, that's what he's going to probably be going for here. Yep. Uh, you know, one thing I want to make sure uh, we go with here is do not want Josh to attack with the dark ride that already has 20 damage on it. Because you know what that opens up? That would put that Dark Ride to 80 damage. And uh, if Josh has four Pokemon on the field, Jason has six Pokemon on the field, that's 100 damage and 180 damage would knock out a Dark Ride. And that would be the beginning of the comeback. Yep, uh, there's definitely options for uh, 
Jason to win this game. Uh, most definitely. So. And the two, Josh is looking for the Pokemon catcher. Does he get it? Does he get it? And he gets an energy card. And energy uh, switch. Energy switch. And oh, energy. is that a dark ride maybe? Could be a dark ride. And he's just going to elect to attack with the dark ride in front. That's going to put dark ride at a 80 damage. Uh, and he takes six damage counters. Uh, and that dark ride is going to be very badly damaged. But now the Piplup has taken more damage than it can possibly bear. And J uh, Josh draws another prize. Yep. Now uh, Jason's left with a Piplup on his bench with 30 damage on it. Uh, one more Night Spear from any point because Mr. Mime is gone. Yep. Uh, it's going to knock out that Piplup. Uh, Night Spear to Mew would also knock out the Mew. Jason's in a rough spot. Even if uh, Jason gets Red Candy and Polly on here, uh, the Dark Rye on the bench with the Dark Claw will not get out. Right. So this Unless is Jason plays a second Tool Scrapper. Yeah, Jason's going to need a lot here. Gets the Ultra Ball and uh, maybe Red Candy and Polly on. Yeah, well, looks like that's what we're going to see. Uh, however, he does lose a Print Plup and a Dust North. So he's really digging for the energy here. He really just wants to get two prizes here. Right. If he can. You know, make it look like a game. Yeah, you know, Empoleon, uh, a very strong deck when it sets up. Unfortunately, this game, uh, that was not the case. But, you know, Jason, given it is all, he can, he can maybe rush in, uh, but he might just take the prize and just kind of end it. Looks oh, like he's he going to discard the water for diving draw. Gets and a float did, stone. Did he draw another water even? No, he got a float stone. Right, going in for the Keldeo. Maybe he's looking for a tool scrapper. He's looking for a, you know, a nice turn where he can uh, up. There and it is. The catcher from Josh. Oh, and jo extends the hen, but he's going to make him attack. Night Spear, put the damage on. Jason does some math here, and that's going to be game. Yep, Mew EX gets knocked out, and Josh takes seven prizes. Yeah, Mew EX gets knocked out, and with it, Jason's chances at the top cut invitational crown. Uh, you know... Winning two tournaments in one day is actually a very difficult task, even certainly, for Jason. Certainly. And, you know, you got to think, uh, after you win Worlds, you got to think, you know, I won Worlds, but how am I going to win the Top Gun Invitational? Uh, apparently playing Empoleon was not the uh, answer. Yeah, here. that's certainly not the answer he was looking for. Uh, and Jason is eliminated from the tournament. So, uh, fun games so far? Uh, uh, yeah, kind of. You know, they've been interesting. Uh, we saw... Two people, two like world-class players, and uh, right. they just kind of fell victim to themselves, really. Okay, so this round we saw Jason Kozinski eliminated. Uh, there was also one person from the other pod who was eliminated. And as well, two people advanced to the top four. And uh, let's get the results here. Yep, so it, we had in the others losers match, we had Igor Costa versus Sammy Sakum. Right. And so we know Jason's been eliminated. Josh goes into the one in one bracket. We had so he will be facing off versus the loser of the winner's match from the fire pod. Right. Okay, so it looks like the matches we're gonna see next round are Sammy Sakum versus Yamato. So Ooh, uh, a repeat looks, a rematch. Looks like Yamato lost and we're gonna have a rematch to see who goes on to the the top four, mm -hmm. and we also going to have Jay Hornung versus Jay Witz, which means uh, Jay Hornung did lose. Uh, Ryan Sablehouse and Edmund Curris do advance to our top four. They're showing their skill in the game. You know, the top two at U.S. Nationals right. also happen to be the top two in the standings you for the Top Cut Invitational. You think we, we might get to see a rematch of the U.S. National Championship? It would be very cool, wouldn't it? Yeah, uh, certainly. You know, I'm sure Ryan wants to get revenge for... Uh, what happened to him at U.S. Nationals. And uh, Edmund, he definitely wanted to show that he won for a reason. Oh, yeah, definitely. He's uh, establishing himself here yeah. at the Top Gun Invitational. Okay. So, so we're going to see two great yeah. matches coming up here soon, and we're going to take a quick break. Um, yeah, we'll see you guys then. And those are our pods, and a few players have been eliminated, but here is our sponsors. And, you know, okay. if you have a chance, please go visit them. They're yep. uh, supporting the community in a great way. Thank yeah, you. and once again, thanks to High Tide Games and uh, LegacyCardShop.com. 
Uh, go ahead and check that one out. Uh, go on Facebook, give them a like. And another thanks to V Graphics for the awesome graphic we have here. Uh, we'll be right back with the third round, and we're going to get to see who advances else to the top four. See you guys.